Rhodes was forever a nation that was tossed between powers that vied for the Aegean. Between the Persians, the Athenians, Alexander the Great, the Diadochi, and even Carrions, Rhodes passed through all of their hands. But in RIS, Rhodes stands alone as a monument to freedom. And I'm going to show you in this video how we can take Rhodes from a tiny little island state into a glorious nation that can dominate the Aegean Sea and is really one of the most sandbox and fun nations you can play in the whole mod. So stay tuned to find out how. Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today we are back with another faction guide and today's guide is the glorious nation of Rhodes because this nation, in my opinion, is one of the most sandbox and fun nations you can play in the game with a small start. Now, in 0.5, there were many tactics as Rhodes that you could do, but in 0.6, there's even more. There are so many different tactics with this nation, and I'm going to present to you my favorite option for dominating the Aegean, but of course, there are plenty of things you can do with Rhodes. Rhodes is pretty much a sandbox nation because you start here alone on this island without many enemies and you can kind of go and do what you want, which makes them awesome fun in the mod. So here you start on the island of Rhodes, of course, with two little settlements. I mean, Rhodes itself is a minor city from the start of the game, which is fantastic. And Lindos is a town but you do start surrounded by a few larger powers with the Ptolemies to your north, as well as the Seleucids. And the Antigonids have this little enclave in Kaunos over here in Caria, which is pretty cool indeed. The Ptolemies also dominate a lot of these islands in the Aegean, and you are going to want to take them at some point. But today is not that day, not yet anyway. But you also start in a pretty dire financial situation Partly because you don't have any high fertility, but you do have trade resources, which is excellent for you going forward. And you also start with a little bit of a decent army as well. Not an amazing army, but definitely nothing to sniff at. So it's absolutely fine. So you have plenty of avenues for expansion to overturn your deficit and do what you want. So let's talk about these strengths and weaknesses. The first strength of Rhodes is, of course, that you start with the city of Rhodes, which is actually a fantastic city at the start of the game. It has an arena, it has an Odeon, it has a Scriptorian to make your generals a lot better and better governors, public baths, a shipwright, a market. It is a fantastic city, and it starts as a minor city, which is a lot more than most of the other settlements on the map. Secondly, you start with the Colossus of Rhodes as a monument, and it is an amazing monument. Increases naval trade by 40%, which is insane. So starting with this monument is a fantastic blessing for you guys. And its third strength is that it is a fun as fuck faction to play, guys. It is so fun. Because technically, you can do anything. You could sail to Pella and take Pella. You could sail to Alexandria, Antioch. You could sail to Rome. I wouldn't recommend that one. But you could sail to Rome or Carthage or wherever you want to go. You can sail the seas and make the seas your own as roads. And it is a really sandbox nation because generally, I mean, we're playing on very hard and I've tried and tested this. I haven't really been navally invaded on roads by anyone when I've been doing my test runs. So you're relatively safe. I don't want to say perfectly safe, but you're relatively safe. And you can kind of go wherever you want, which is a fantastic strength for the nation and really, really fun. So your fourth strength, although in weaknesses, I'm going to mention the limitations of the roster, is that you get access to possibly the best slinger unit in the game. This slinger unit is in Sane. They are armor-piercing slingers with a missile attack of 8 as a slinger with a missile range of 160. 40 meters, sorry, 30 meters further than the standard Greek archers. That, in my opinion, is insane. And when we talk about the temples 
I'll let you know about something that that's there as well that can make these guys even more overpowered. So one of the weaknesses of the Rodians is that their roster is pretty limited. Now, that comes with a very, very heavy caveat. In fact, early game, their roster is pretty darn good, mainly because of the fact that their hoplites are a pretty decent hoplite unit with 39 defense, 15 morale, and 11 melee attack. And their epibates are better than you think. 32 defense, 14 morale, 11 melee attack, but with a sword. So it's actually quite good with two jabbies to throw as well. Basically a sort of a version of the Skiritai, maybe a better version of the Skiritai that the Spartans have. Um, and of course, you get access to these bad boys, the Rhodian Slingers. Armor-piercing Slingers that are insanely good. Eight missile attack with the Slingers with 160 missile range. That is insane. They are an incredibly good missile unit. Really, really good. It can't be understated how uh, good these units are for their cost. They are very, very good indeed. However, it is still a bit of a weakness, your roster, because you don't really get any cavalry apart from the Prodromoi, and you don't get any Phalangites, and your heavy infantry is literally just a hoplite. You don't get Thorakitai. You get some Thuriophoroi, which is fine, but you don't get any Thorakitai or anything like that. So your roster overall is relatively limited. So that is why it is a weakness, even if it has some standout performers in there. And your second weakness, guys, is that although it's a fun and sandbox nation, because you start on this island, wherever you decide to go and take, unless it is straight into the Antigonids and Ptolemies, which I'm not going to recommend in 0.6, then, you know, you're going to get a lot of corruption spread out across this area. The map is very big. And remember, corruption starts, I think, at 4%, 20 tiles away, and scales all the way up to 65%. 100 tiles away now if we have a look at this ship like 100 tiles is not far on this map guys <laughs> so even if you're going after crete you're still going to get major corruption there as well but overall Rhodes is a really fun nation i don't want to say any more weaknesses because it doesn't really have that many other weaknesses so let's go on to the unit roster so here we are with the Rhodian roster, guys. And like I say, it's a relatively limited roster. It's not very big, as you can tell. You start with a Rhodian Neotiroi, which I believe in Greek would be Neotiri. So someone please comment down below just to confirm that the oi is actually an e, right, in Greek. So the Neotiri. Um, but these guys are not very good, <laughs> as you can tell. 24 defense, 13 morale, and 10 melee attack. So these guys are really your basement level infantry, if you want them. Not good at all but you do get some good hoplites these guys are going to be good early game 39 defense 15 morale and 11 melee attack these are your only real heavy infantry option without aor however nearby in carrier guys just across the water if you do attack the ptolemies then carrion light and heavy infantry are both very good options so you don't need to worry about that too much and if you go into peloponnese you can get some hoplites and some phalangites, I believe. Peloponnesian phalangites, maybe? But you definitely get Peloponnesian hoplites as AOR there as well. So you can get some more heavy units. Um, but yeah, you don't really get any good heavy infantry. Because your other infantry is an Epibate unit. And it's a quite a good Epibate unit. 14 morale, 11 melee attack, and 32 defense. So these guys are decent. They're not amazing, but they're not decent. Now, in terms of your uh, options for missile troops, you've got your standard Greek archers and Akontista. You've also got standard Greek Peltas, which are fine. Decent Peltas units. But the real standout here, and really the standout of your whole roster, is the Rhodian Slingers. They are effective against armor, like we said previously. They have 160 meter missile range, which is insanely good. And eight missile attack for a Slinger unit that is armor piercing that is crazy guys that is really 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 good like these guys are so good so when you get the chance get as many of those boys as 
possible. So they are really your best unit, I would say. Even though it doesn't look like it on stats, they're a fantastic unit. Cavalry-wise, you are very limited. You only get Prodromoy and Greek General's Bodyguard initially, so not much there. But if you get four minor cities, you get access then to the Thurio Foroi, which are a decent unit. 12 melee attack, 14 morale, and 34 defense. Gonna be fine early game, but not good late game. And then you also get an Espido Foroi when you reach huge city with one of your cities, which will likely be Rhodes, let's be honest. And these guys are a good cavalry unit. All the Spido Foroi are really good cavalry units. 15 morale, 11 melee attack, 10 missile attack for their 7 javis that they're going to throw. 27 defense with 28 charge. So a very versatile cavalry unit because they've got 7 javis that they can throw. But also going to do really well in melee. They're not quite up to the standard of a really elite unit like the Thessalian Lancers or Hetairoi. But they are not an elite unit, so that is why. But they are a very versatile and good cavalry unit, so a decent cavalry unit nonetheless. But overall, your roster is relatively limited, and you're going to be playing a lot of battles with Slingers, Epibartai, and Hoplites. So if you like that sort of gameplay, it's going to be fantastic for you. But if you don't, then you're going to have to spice up life with some carrying heavy infantry from AOR or any other AOR units you can get your hands on. In Crete, in fact, there are quite a few AOR units, so you can go and get some more Cretan boys, Cretan archers as well, but you really don't need them when you've got Rhodian slingers, to be honest. Well, back to the campaign map. So let's talk about your temples because they are the unique buildings that you get access to as roads. Now, Zeus is your law temple, so that is what you want to build in your far away regions where you can get law and get rid of that dirty corruption that you definitely do not want in those regions. Now, the Shrine to Artemis is a really interesting one. The, I mean, both Artemis and Poseidon kind of go together. They're really cool temples because they give happiness, but also a trade income bonus. Artemis actually gives a bonus to missile weapons, which if you are getting the Rhodian Slingers, which are an awesome Slinger unit, then you definitely want to get this Shrine to Artemis because with that upgraded plus three, you're going to have 11 missile attack with a 160 missile range slinger unit, which is just insane. That is also effective against armor. That is insane, guys. So like I say, the Temple of Artemis is fantastic, especially when combined with your Rhodian slingers. But the final temple, the Temple of Poseidon, is another really interesting one because it also increases trade but double the amount of the Temple of Artemis. And it also gives a little bit of lore at the Awesome Temple level and some public order due to happiness, which is standard. But it upgrades special weapons as well. Now, in this case, special weapons often for land units are attributed to cataphract... No, sorry, not cataphracts. Chariots and elephants that have special attack. So they will get an upgrade to their special attack with this bonus. But I also believe that this has something to do with ships as well. I believe it upgrades the weapons of ships. Now, someone down below, comment and let me know whether that's true. But I believe that that will upgrade your ship. So you can get insanely powerful ships as roads as well, which is insanely good. So ultimately, temple-wise, in a non-recruitment hub that's far away, get the Temple of Zeus. In places that are close that don't have corruption, get the Poseidon anyway just for the trading cup. And for your recruitment hubs for ships, for your shipyards, get the Poseidon one. And for your recruitment hubs for land units, get the Temple of Artemis. And you'll be doing absolutely peachy. So now let's move on to your guys' favorite part of every video. That is the starting moves as roads. Now I'm going to present a few different tactics to you. And a few of them are good. A few of them are very difficult. But it is completely up to you which way you go. And then I'm going to do my preferred tactic, which is going after Crete. Now in 0.5... I always recommended going for Chios as Rhodes first because Crete was full of rebel rebel cities that never upgraded, that had decent garrisons that were hard to take. And Chios was an island unto itself and you could trade with the Antigonids and Pergamon with that island. But 
Unfortunately, in 0.6, the uh, Ptolemies have a really, really strong, <laughs> strong affection for Chios. I have found that literally in every campaign, they will declare war on Chios. So I don't recommend the Chios strat anymore. And if we look at the rest of the islands, there are lots of Ptolemaic islands, but I would not recommend going after the Ptolemies to start with. Two reasons, guys. First of all, if you go after them on the mainland, they have this army right nearby. You're not going to be able to beat that with that unless you are literally Alexander Reborn behind that computer. I mean, I definitely don't think I could beat this army with this army. So, yeah, I, I just don't think uh, it's possible. So, you do not want to fight that army if you're going on the land. And if you are going into the sea, the Ptolemies will spam out ships like you've never seen before. And you will very easily get your troops drowned and destroyed very quickly. So, that is not a recommended strat at all. I would really not recommend that. Let's now talk about some rogue strategies that are actually quite decent if you are playing as Rhodes. The first one is to go to Macedon <laughs> and take Pella. Yes, I know it sounds crazy, but Pella is a really good city. It's a minor city as well. Has some fantastic buildings in there as well. And when you've taken Pella, you can pretty much take the rest of this land really easily, similar to how Epirus does it as well. So going to Macedon is never really a bad option, really. And you can kind of just piecemeal take them out up here in the north because right at the start of the game, guys, the Antigonids are very much a paper tiger. They look scary, but they're not. Now, 30 turns into the game, guys, the Antigonids have grown out of that paper shell and have become a steel tiger. So by taking them out early, you're going to have a really easy time compared to fighting them later on. And of course, Pella's a really good city. So it's a good strat. I do like that strat in Indeed. Now, another strat that you can do is go for the city of World's Desire. Now, the only reason I mention this is because it's Mimi and it's funny. <laughs> but it is also quite a good strat because around here, when we look at Byzantium, for example, they are not bordered by anyone of significance. No one that is too strong. So by taking these lands, you are not putting yourself at risk of fighting with the Seleucids and the Ptolemies. Now, if you take some of these rebel settlements like this one and this Thracian settlement, the Seleucids and the Ptolemies might declare war on you. Or if you go ham and come into the middle here, likely the Seleucids are going to declare war on you. But it's another decent strat that you can do. And you can kind of work your way up through Pontic Pentapolis and start to dominate the Black Sea, which is really cool. Now, other rogue strats are going for Alexandria, but they do have a big army there as well. But Alexandria, of course, is a fantastic, fantastic settlement. Now, of course, there are more rogue strats than even that. And that, of course, one of them is going for Alex Alexandria. Another one is going for Carthage. But really, you know, as Rhodes, you can sail the waves and do what you want with that starting army. My preferred route is something a little bit different, however. But like I say... If you want to go and do some crazy rogue strats, Rhodes is the nation for you. It is so fun. You can do what you want. But we are going to talk about the strategy that I would employ, and that is going for Crete. Now, Crete is a big battle royale now, but you can kind of take out each of these smaller nations one by one and quite easily as well, which is a really good strat. And Crete now is quite rich because you're going to trade with yourself and trade with lots of other people from Crete now, which you weren't doing before. So it's a fantastic target to go for, and that is the strategy that I'm going to employ in this video. But first of all, let's have a look at our men. We are going to leave Agathocles. We're going to take Agathocles with us. So we're going to pop him in there. And we are, in fact, going to take the whole army. Of course, do not delete your ship, guys, in this one. That would be insane. Please don't do that. <laughs> that would be incredibly insane and what we're going to do is we are not going to go for eastern crete over here we are going to go for western crete now there's a very specific reason for this it's because kaidonia doesn't have walls now the timing is not that different because it, say you landed on the second turn here you are then going to be able to siege down this city whereas it's going to take us maybe through two or three turns to get to kaidonia but by doing this and going for Kaidonia, you're taking out the Kaidonian army very quickly. 
which I always think is very good. And you can go and get Kaidonia straight away, start making some money, and it's very nicely protected on this end of the island. You take this end, and then you are nice and safe. So that is my preferred option, but honestly, it really doesn't matter, guys. You can go anywhere down here. The only reason why I wouldn't go for uh, here, here Rapitna, yes, um, <laughs> why I wouldn't go for that one first is because you run the risk of being at war with the Ptolemies, especially if you're playing on harder difficulties. So we are going to go for Kaidonia first with the army, I hope. Yes, I was just worried then that the army wasn't coming. We're also going to move Philiskos of Lindos into Rhodes. Hopefully with the Scriptorium, he will get some good governor traits because at the minute, he's not the greatest of governors. So if we look at his stats here, he does get plus 15 taxes. Less fertility, less squalor, uh, more squalor though as well, which is never great, but good good for the more taxes. We're also going to, of course, put roads up to very high, and we're going to put this one, squeeze as much tax out of these places as we can, and we are still on minus 1,922. So following that, we are also going to get the shrine to Poseidon to start with, to have a look. That gives 38... So let's instead get the crop rotation, although 5,000 for 68 is not good. So we're going to get the Shrine to Poseidon. And then in Lindos, we are also going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to get the Shrine to Poseidon. I know it doesn't look like a lot of money, guys, but over time, this is going to add up and add up and add up. Another option, you could actually go for Rhodian Recruitment 1 if you want. But yeah, Lindos is only a town, so and it doesn't have any military buildings, so... I would say that's not really the recommended strategy there. Now, with the rest of our money, we are going to get some Epibates for me. Actually, because we can afford to get two Slingers rather than just one Epibates and nothing else that's useful, we're going to get two Slingers because, like I said, these Slingers are absolutely insanely good. So they are going to do us very well, especially in, um, in siege battles where they are going to go absolutely ham. But I think that's all for now. And now all you do is just wait two turns and painfully watch your money go into the red while you sail to wherever your first target is. And of course, for us, our first target is Kaidonia. So here we are at Kaidonia, guys. And uh, we've got a couple of notifications, lots of diplomacy and a new family member. Oh, fantastic. But... We are now at Kaidonia, and their guy has stood outside. So we're going to have a draw-out battle, which isn't that necessary anyway, because it's got no walls, as you can see. But the other reason I wanted to mention going for Kaidonia, though, as well, guys, is if their ship isn't here, you can actually get your ship safe on the first turn. But because their ship's there, we can't now, which is a little bit unfortunate. I'm going to risk attacking them. And we got destroyed. Oh, dearie me. Oh, well. Well, I guess we're not going back anytime soon. That is the risk. But if you're a bit luckier than me, and their ship isn't just sat in the middle, uh, you know, protecting their port, once you've taken Kaidonia, you can slot him in, and your ship is going to be safe. Now, that is very important so that you can ship troops to and from Rhodes, of course, because at the minute, Rhodes is the only place that you can actually train from. So it's a very good idea to have that ship around. Unfortunately, we've made life a little harder for ourselves. But who doesn't love a challenge? So let's get into this battle. They have some good Cretan hoplites and all that sort of thing. Um, and in fact, why is the army... I was going to say, why is the army not coming in? So instead, we're going to just attack the city. Because when we attack the army, the, uh, the city guy wasn't coming in. Um... But it doesn't really matter. I would just prefer to do one battle rather than two or three. So that's why I'm going to attack these guys. But actually, the better strat here is to just fight these guys on the field and then take the city because it'd be easier. But I think it'll be better to take them out one by one. Tactics-wise for this battle, guys, we are going to rush in and just kill his general and then rush all the rest of our men in as well. Um... I just rush them into the center. Now, I don't want to take this settlement right away and bring down the timer on the main square. So you've got to be careful of that because I want to destroy this other army so I don't have to deal with it again. And also remember, guys, one major thing to remember 
is that make sure that in Polyrenia, the second settlement of this nation, of Kaidonia, that they have a family member. Because if you do this battle all together like I am doing, and you kill all the captains, all the generals, and all of their generals die, the faction will die, and Polyrenia will get a really big rebel garrison rather than just the single man that they had before. So we are going to go straight in. I believe that's their faction leader, but we do have a lot more men, so we should be okay. We're also going to charge our uh, Prodromoy in there as well. Um, or just get them to fire. Apparently they're fighting. I don't know how they're fighting or how they're fighting, but apparently they are. But they're still firing into the middle. And then we're going to just block off this area um, from the enemy. We're going to get our hoplites set up here. And we're going to get them on guard mode. And we're going to do a double line of those boys. We're going to get the Akontisti right behind them, ready to fire. We're going to get them off runaway mode as well. And we're also going to turn them off fire at will for now. We're also going to get our Rodian slingers and our archers in here. Out of the town square, remember, guys. Uh, because it looks like they are coming already. That is not the best formation I've ever seen, my men. Not going to lie. I mean, no one can get through it, so that's a good thing. But it looks like we have pretty much killed their general now. So now we need to get the uh, Prodromoy to charge in. Because their general is quite tough, it seems. Very tough. And we're going to let this army come in. We've also got another army over here, led by this boy. So let's get our hoplite here, ready, set up. Get there, my man. Get there, my man. Come on. Speed up, my friend. And what we're going to do is get this Antigone. Uh, sorry, not Antigone. Akontistai there. Kill these boys. Hopefully, we can kill them all. And these guys are going to die very quickly to our hoplite as well. Now, these guys are going to take a bit of damage from the general's bodyguard. But they should be able to hold because, of course, they are spearmen. That is their general going. And that is them all dead. So what we're now going to do is we're going to come out this way, if we can. Come this way. And we're going to go all the way around and just charge them from the back like we should. Now, hopefully, we are not on the... We shouldn't be on the town square. Actually, the Rodian Slingers are a better option to fire. So let's get them there. In fact, let's get them a bit further forward so they'll fire a bit better. There we go. And I don't want to... Remember, I don't want to take this on the timer because I chose to fight this battle against everyone and kill them all rather than fighting them one by one. These guys should hold off. Now we can fire. So now these guys should be able to fire. Please fire, guys. Fire. There we go. That's their other general dead. Fantastic. So where is our cavalry? Let's keep coming then. Right, go there. Looks like you are going to go the right way. Fantastic. That's what we want to see. And we are going to surround this whole army. These guys are now firing their javelins. Actually, not many of them firing too much. But that'll just be keep on going over time and keep firing. In fact, we should fire into the Cretan hoplites. Cretan hoplites are very good. Let's just take a look at those. I'll just show you how good these Cretan hoplites are. But our Rhodian hoplites are actually, you know, 40 defense is not bad at all. But the Cretan hoplites are also pretty similar level. So, yeah, pretty darn good uh, hoplite unit. But all we need to do is try and make them rout. And that is the main thing. Make them rout. Where is this guy? Here he comes. Make them rout, and then they will all run, and that'll be fantastic. Remember, they are going to... Uh, Go on to the town square. But that's fine. Not too much of a worry. And we're hardly taking any losses. This is glorious, my friends. Glorious. So I will see you in a sec, guys, when we get the charge off. Here come the charging boys, guys. So hopefully we can break them with this charge. Plenty of missiles firing into them as well. There we go. Nice. Probably should have rallied the guy. But I wanted to show you some lovely cinematics. And you can see, oh dear, they're not happy at all, are they? That's them going. That's the mass route for the boys. Let's keep going. Keep on going. Let's get these boys if we can. And do not let anyone through. They're going to fight to the death. That's fine. But these guys should want to route very soon. In fact, we're going to go for another charge rather than waste our general's bodyguards on this too much. Let's go for another charge. And you can see these guys are all just getting absolutely pummeled. So let's come out. And then let's go for that secondary charge. Going to rally the general. 
so that he doesn't die on the charge. And hopefully this charge should be enough to see these guys break. Fantastic. That is them all dead. So keep on with that one. And this Greek general's bodyguard just needs to die, basically. And then we're there. Fantastic. What a glorious chain route, anyway. Very nice. And our men are going ham, just killing them all. Fantastic. Glorious, glorious to see. So what a victory. I'll see you soon, guys. A glorious victory, guys. A glorious victory. We lost about 120 and we killed 531 and we are playing on very hard. Nice. That is why I wanted to do it all in one battle because we didn't need to do it in three. But if you want to do it in three or need to do it in three to separate them all out and kill them separately, that is absolutely fine. It's still a very valid tactic. It'll just take you a little bit longer. But glorious victory, guys. I'll see you back in our newly conquered territory. Victory and glory, my friends. So, of course, we're going to enslave. Remember to always enslave, guys. That actually might make Lindos expand. It does. And now you can see we are positive in terms of cash. Not hugely positive, but once we delete this building, we're going to be nicely positive. And the first thing we're going to do is queue in that palisade. Now, I know Lindos is expanding, and it will be nice to build in Lindos. Uh, but if you want to, you can also destroy a few of the other buildings. For me, though, I am not going to destroy any of these buildings because, of course, we need to get a recruitment hub on here as soon as possible. Probably after this palisade is built, we will build it on Kaidonia and hopefully upgrade Kaidonia as far as we can go. But first of all, let's kill the rest of these boys, but we can't because we don't have the speed... So let's see if we can go and siege that down just with the generals. And it's going to take two turns to build the ram. I just wanted to experiment with that to see if we could actually build a ram in one turn and then join the infantry next turn. But they may actually come and sally out. We shall see. So I'll see you in a couple of turns, guys. And now that we have that extra 2,000, I am going to spend it on a Byream in there. And potentially two Byreams if we want, just to be a little bit safer. But for now, one is enough to ferry troops back and forth. Because we're only going to tra ferry troops, guys. This is a key part of the detail. We are only going to ferry troops back and forth between wars. Once we have destroyed the enemy in a war. The reason being, because if we don't do that, there's a risk our whole army gets destroyed... And when that happens, you know, it's going to take you a very long time just with roads as a recruitment hub to build up an uh, equivalent army again with the two-turn recruitment. So, of course, we really do want to only ferry troops in between wars when we have no risk of being attacked by enemy ships. Remember, guys, while you are waiting for your ships to get across and while you are recruiting and building up your nation it is incredibly important to go around and get trade agreements with the antigonids the seleucids um, the ptolemies the prienians and even get alliances like now we have an alliance with the ptolemies over here and just a trade do we have an alliance no we've got an alliance with the antigonids should i say and trade agreements with all these guys including priene and we're going to get one with pergamon and you can sell the map information and you can see after last turn uh, I think we're on minus 400, but with that trade agreement with the Antigonids and Ptolemies, now we are instantly making a lot more money. So make sure you go around getting trade agreements with those boys so that you can continue making money once you've taken this first place. If you really, really, really want to min-max everything, guys, you can get this guy and pop him on the boats with your army so that he can try and open gates. Um, it's not very successful very often, but it's it's worth a try, isn't it? So do make sure that if you really do want to min-max, the reason why I personally don't do that is it reduces the turn time to start with. Uh, so you're going to be three turns to Kaidonia instead of two, and that then means that you are, you know, another 2,000 in debt than you that you weren't previously. But it's not a huge difference or a huge issue but a completely up to you scenario, whether you want a little bit extra min maxi or whether you want that money. So we've taken Polyrenia, guys. That means Kaidonia is 
dead, which is fantastic. And we can get some more money from destroying this Kaidonia Recruitment 1 in Polyrenia. And it is a large town, which is also really, really good for us. Because that means we can build a port here and potentially start trading with ourselves and the Ptolemies as well. And maybe Sparta if we get all the way around to there with our diplomat at some point. Although Sparta is known for a little bit of a boat bomb across here. So uh, do be wary of that one. But now we're starting to make decent money. Now at this point, you could send your troops back if you wanted. Now... I don't think they need to be sent back, especially with your two generals. We're going to leave behind a Greek archer in Polyrenia. And we are just going to chain through the nations here. So how I would recommend you doing it is just taking them out one by one. So we are going to go for Knossos, although it is separated here. Knossos and uh, Aptera. Although we take this out, then we're going to go after Gortin. Then finally take out Nosos' capital, and then we're going to go on to Litos as well. And remember not to take this GCS settlement, because the Ptolemaic Kingdom will attack us at that point. So that is how we're going to do it. Just take them out one by one, and we're going to ignore the rebel settlements for now, because they've got two big garrisons, and they're not going to come and attack you, so you don't need to be aggressive with them. But we do need to be aggressive with the smaller factions, make sure we take them out before they get strong. So at this point, guys, we have now taken Aptera off Knossos. And we have also recruited these two juicy Rhodian slingers, reinforcements for our army. These guys are going to keep our army going while we continue to march down um, through Crete. Now, like I say, we're going to ignore Arsino for now, even though it has a... Well, basically because it has a massive garrison. And it's not going to do anything to us in the long run. And what we're going to do is we're going to cycle our garrisons over here. So I'm going to leave a garrison in Polyrenia, mainly because I believe you can see this little border here. That borders Sparta. So Sparta is likely to come and attack us at some point with Polyrenia. So, yeah, we we don't want that to happen, of course. But it may happen. And the reason why they've done this, of course, is to make the AI do naval invasions and go across these lands. So you can see that might force Sparta to come across here. But we are going to leave uh, this garrison. We're going to move them into Aptera and keep on moving with our army and just move our garrison along all the way. And we're going to attack this neutral faction and Agalai. Okay, interesting. Not great, but more Gortinian hoplites, which are a great, uh, great unit. And we're going to cycle this garrison, like I said, across into Aptera, and they are instantly very, very happy. Fantastic. And then we might just have to put this down slightly in Kaidonia, which is fine. And what can we get out of this settlement now? Probably some land clearance. Over here, we've got land clearance building. In here, let's also go for some communal farming. And then across the way, we are building that one. And in roads, what are we going to build? Looks like we can only build one of these. So let's build the Artemis one, because it will give us trade if we choose to go down that route. But you can see, this is a draw-out battle. We are going to console command it, guys, because we have uh, done our battle already. So we are going to console command this one but this should not be really too much of an issue those two units are not very good and they've only got two units of proper infantry and hippeus are a light cavalry so i don't think we'd have too much of a worry with our two faction leaders so heroic victory and if we'd actually played that we would have taken that settlement in one turn which would have been very glorious of course and after these wars very likely we're going to have to either go home or get more and more replacement troops. So we cannot recruit anything right now, but that is fine. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save up to build the recruitment hub uh, in Kaidonia next turn. So start that recruitment ball rolling so we don't need to ship troops but are on a danger ship between Rhodes and, uh, and our land. So yeah, that is the thing we're going to do. So I'll see you in a few turns, guys and let you know how it's gone. 
So now we've taken Gortina, guys. We've got a decision to make. This is going to give us a load of cash as well. We've got a decision to make. If you get to this point and you still have plenty enough army, keep going. Do not stop. Keep going. That's all you need to do. Just keep going. You're going to do very well indeed. We're going to drop these troops off. We're going to drop them in there. And now, in my opinion, we could probably win this battle against whatever troops these guys have got to offer, which is not many. We could win a defensive siege against them with two of our generals and our two Rhodian slingers. So I'm going to take a very risky decision. I'm going to pop the ship in there. And we're going to send these boys home. We're going to embark them now so that they don't waste movement points next turn. And we're going to send them back for their retraining. But you can see now we're making 5,000 a turn. And we've only taken four settlements, guys. That's all it takes. Uh, we're also going to cycle this garrison like we did last time. And put them in Gortina just for some extra protection. Just in case. Hopefully this will be happy. Yes, it is. Fantastic. Because... This one actually isn't bordering the enemy. It's only bordering the rebel settlement here. And hopefully no one's going to boat bomb us. But <laughs> that's a risk that you've got to take on your own if you want to. Uh, Fiskion. This man's obesity has earned him the name, the nickname the Fatty. Well, that just sounds like workplace bullying. I'm not going to lie. Um, but anyway. <laughs> We're in a good position now. We've got loads of money coming in. And like I said... We're going to make Kaidonia into our first recruitment hub on the island so that we can retrain units directly here, but we may not even need to at this point. In terms of the rest of our building, let's have a look at what we're going to do. Over here, we're just retraining, so uh, repairing. So let's build the port. Let's see. It says it's only going to make 84, but I bet if we had a trade agreement with Sparta that that would be an amazing amount of money we'd get. So we're going to come through the Antigonid lands. We already talked to all those boys. So we're going to come through and talk to all these minor nations in Greece and try and get trade agreements with them, and especially Sparta, Messene, and Ellis, because we might be able to trade with those boys going forward. In the meantime, while we're sending our boys back, we've got some spare money, so we're definitely going to queue in an Epibates there so that we can pick them up after these boys have been retrained. We may even get a chance to recruit two. So let's queue two in there while we have the money, just so I don't forget later down the line. <laughs> so now Nossos has come and attack us, but very, very nicely, we've got a coming of age of Aristophanes here, which is fantastic. That means we definitely can win that battle, but we aren't going to do the sally out battle just in case, just in case there's any problems here, especially Agali. What are these guys? They are long-range archer spearmen. Interesting. Very cool. I do like those boys. They also have Cretan Slingers, which are a really good slinger unit. Pretty much on a par with us, just less morale in terms of the slingers. Um, I've also taken a peace with Gortin, guys, because they were willing to offer money for it. So they offered money for peace, so there was no point not taking it. In fact, it was better to take that while we were tr uh, trying to get our troops across because if we didn't, and they attacked us with their ships, you know, our troops are dead. So definitely worth taking that, just to be on the safe side. And one thing to note, guys, I have left this family member in Rhodes for a very specific reason. If you want a general stack, of course, you can. That's not a problem. But I have left him there for a very specific reason. And the reason being that, you see, we have two, three generals in here now, but it was two before. If we'd have taken all three and they'd have died in a battle, our campaign would be over. All our family members would be dead. So, yeah, I want to make sure one of them, at least, is safe. <laughs> it's pretty much the only reason behind that. But if they do attack next turn, I am very confident that we can win that battle. They do have two family members, mind you, and some Hippies. But I think we've got enough here to win this battle out. So we've dropped our men off the ships and we've boat bombed them. We are going to auto resolve this. Hopefully, yes. Very nice little victory for us there. We lost a few troops in that fight. And we also got a man of the hour. But Agathocles died. Are you kidding me? He was very old anyway. So that's no problem, really. Megalopolis has now uh, risen, which is kind of cool. But we got a man of the hour, so let's definitely accept that. So we can carry on with two generals. And we're going to just leave Aristophanes behind. We're going to jump in here. 
And we are going to go straight for the capital of Knossos. Get that siege down and just carry on taking out. We'll probably go for Gortin after this. And then we'll go for Litos. It is pretty much a rinse and repeat strategy, guys. So I'm probably not going to show you any more of it. I'm just going to play it to speed it up because, it, like I say, it's just the same strategy. If you need to go back and retrain, send them back and retrain. If you don't, carry on conquering and conquer them one by one. They're very piecemeal, very easy to take out. So I don't think I need to repeat that, guys. So I will see you in a few turns when most of Crete, most, <laughs> is ours. So guys, here we are a few turns later. I don't know, six, seven turns later or something like that. Maybe six something. And we have finally taken out all the Cretan nations. You can see we've got plenty without garrisons on here. Which I think is the right right option for now. We've also retrained our army that has some good experience now. And we've re uh, recruited a few more Epibartes. We've also got a new general who was adopted. And we're in a really good situation. 8,000 gold in the bank because we are building everywhere we can. Apart from one city. Actually, not Leto, because we took it last turn. But yeah, there's not really anything to build there. I mean, Oaxes, there's nothing to build. We're also building up Knossos to be a recruitment hub. Level 2. And we have level 1 in Kaidonia. And we're one turn away from getting the city barracks. And then we'll build level 2 as well. So, what do you do when you're at this point? Well... There are many options. This is the thing with uh, roads. I nearly said Crete then, guys. <laughs> this is the thing with roads. You have so many options available to you uh, from the start. And if you do this strat at this point, I mean, you can even turtle at this point if you want. And just take these last two rebel settlements from Crete. Leave the GCS and Ptolemies for a bit. Just make some money, build up your army, and then go after the Ptolemies. Or you can jump across to the Peloponnese and jump in on the action over here. You can see Megalopolis and Argos have both uh, risen up, which is pretty cool to see. In terms of the tactic that I would recommend, I mean, at this point, this big army is still around, still fighting. And I have had my spy here the whole time just to make sure that that big army was not jumping on any ships here and coming across to invade us. But what I would recommend at this point is, in my opinion, the best option for you is to just go for the Peloponnese. It's probably the easiest option. You can go all the way to Corinth, Fort Wall it off, or just leave Corinth as it is and defend Corinth and Achaea up here in Aegeon. Just defend here, and you will have the whole of the Peloponnese to yourself, and then you'll be embroiled in all the Greek uh, drama. But by that point, you should be strong enough to take on whatever is thrown at you. Or the more risky, cheekier, spicier, spicier meatball of an option, guys, is to go into the islands of the uh, of the Ptolemies and just start sniping them one by one. And in my opinion, the best option for fighting the Ptolemies in that war, if you were going to do it right now, would be to turtle for two or three turns. Maybe four turns to build up a bit bigger of an army. Maybe some extra garrison troops. But you can probably leave these cities undefended. Because they're not going to they're not gonna reinvade them. But what I would do is... I would avoid the mainland at all costs for a little bit. Let the Seleucids and the Ptolemies um, absolutely knock the shit out of each other. To put it in a very eloquent language. Um... While you go and just snipe all these little islands. They're not defended, as you can see, guys. There's no one in here. Like, no one home. So go and take these islands. Don't take that one. That's mainland. But take these islands. Can they actually walk across there? No, they can't. Go and take all these little islands. And you can even go all the way into the north. Take these islands off Athens as well. Maybe this island too. From, uh, and Chios. And just make a maritime empire of islands. Make sure you have a good enough navy so they're not, you're not going to die with your army. Or make sure that you are going between ports. So like here to um, here. Here. Uh, on the, That's not our dock. <laughs> to here to here. Um, but when you're carrying troops so you, your navy can't get killed, then go across. Take it. 
and then dock your navy in there as well. But that is what I would do, personally, is do that. But uh, like I say, it's a more risky strategy. You might get boat bombed by a full stack from the Ptolemies. But by this point, you might be strong enough to deal with that anyway. So, you know, Crete, sorry, not Crete, Rhodes is a really fun faction. So overall, guys, what difficulty would I give Rhodes? Now, despite the massive negative at the start, I really do think this is a very chill nation to play and a really nice and quite fun one, as well as relatively easy. So I'm going to give a difficulty rating of a 2 out of 10. It could have been a 3, potentially, but I think with this strategy, it's a 2 out of 10. If you're going for something wild like invading Rome or Syracuse or Pella, then it might be quite a bit harder. But for this strategy and for this nation, I think a 2 is reasonable. Well, guys, I hope you have enjoyed that guide video for Rhodes. And we have shown you how you can take Rhodes from a single island to maybe two islands and then onto many, many more. So if you did enjoy, guys, a like and a subscribe would be really, really appreciated. I hope you enjoy all the rest of the content that is coming out. And I will be doing a hot seat campaign as this nation with rather incoherent so make sure you go subscribe to him so you can keep up to date with that series when we get going which is going to be insanely fun and i can tell already it's going to be really really fun so do make sure you subscribe to me and him of course so thank you very much for watching guys it's been a pleasure as always please do like and subscribe and i'll see you all again on the next video